our hearts and minds be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Today is Ash Wednesday. You all have these beautiful black marks on your forehead. Because today starts a journey that we take as Christians. Ash Wednesday is the beginning of the season of Lent. Lent. Lent, not Lent, not the stuff you find in your pocket, right? Lent. Lent comes from the Anglo-Saxon word for... I know you all wish it was this today. Actually, it does kind of feel like this today. Spring. Lent is basically springtime for Christians. It's a journey that takes us along a track of 40 days as we journey to, to Jesus' death and resurrection. 40 days, not including Sunday, so technically Lent is 46 days long. And why 40 days? 40 reminds us of the, Jesus' time in the wilderness. It reminds us of the 40 days that it rained. When Noah was on the boat, it reminds us of the 40 years when the Israelites wandered in the wilderness. 40 is a, is a special number. And the reason that we journey for 40 days is because it reminds us of these things. It reminds us of our story. It reminds us of who we are. And as we, as we listen tonight to Tim read the readings, did you hear some of those things in there? Blow the trumpet, let the ministers between the vestibule and the altar, let them weep. Where did it say that? I heard, I heard you say that. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Bless you. Let them say, spare the people of the Lord, and do not make a heritage, a mockery, a byword among the nations. Where is the vestibule? And the altar. Well, that's the altar, right? And the vestibule is back there where you came in. So where is it between? Right here. The ministers of the Lord. That's you. Did you all hear what Tim just said? The one that was up here reading it? Did he know that when he was reading it? That's you, the ministers of the Lord, should weep and be ready to do whatever it is that God calls us to do. You see, and on this night we usually hear the reading that reminds us of what we, can, what we hear in the introduction to Lent, where we're invited along a journey of self-examination and repentance we're invited along a journey, 40 days of prayer and fasting, right? Lent is a time that we give something up. And the reason we give something up is because Jesus gave up everything for us. And we're supposed to mimic that journey and do something that helps us bring us closer to Christ. And I say, if giving something up helps you with that, great. If taking something on helps you with that, great. If you have to do something else to help you with that, by all means, do whatever it is you need to do. To journey closer with Christ. Sacrificial giving and works of love. We're supposed to give of our time, ourselves, and our offerings. Not only during the 40 days of Lent, but all the time. Because that's what God has called us to do. And that's what God has called us to be. And that's what Jesus did for us. See, normally the reading for this night is from Matthew chapter 6, and it's the part after Jesus gives the disciples the Lord's Prayer, and it talks about how you, you should fast and, and make sure that you put oil over your head, and you, should, and you should give, but you shouldn't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, and if you pray, you need to pray and go into a closet and do it in private so people don't see you doing it. But how many of us today saw people walking around with ash crosses on their forehead? I didn't really even go anywhere. We're not supposed to display acts of, of piety out to the world. Because that's not what we're called to do. 
That's not what we're called to be. You would think because the, the main reading for this night, I switched it over to John chapter 10, which, is the, which talks about Jesus being the gate, which is a misinterpretation. It should be door, but door doesn't work very well, I guess, with sheep, so they thought maybe they should put gate instead of door. And the good shepherd, which is different than the bad shepherd that he actually talks about, and is talked about in other parts of the Bible. And he talks about thieves and bandits coming in, and who are thieves and bandits? Do you realize the only other time in the Gospel of John that the word for thief is used is when it's used to describe a disciple who leaves the meal after Jesus washes his feet? The only other person in the Gospel of John that is ever described as a thief is Judas. Where thieves and bandits come to steal. And Judas is actually the only one of the disciples that ever leaves the fold that Jesus talks about here. That they, they who know my name will come in and go out through me. So what is this passage supposed to lead us to? On a night where we're supposed to be focused on prayer and fasting and sacrificial giving and works of repentance and understanding our own sin and our own mortality. What does this passage actually tell us? That we should follow Jesus? Because that's what the sheep do? Or is it something more? We wrote a devotional, me and three members of this congregation, wrote a devotional for the members of this congregation to use during the season of Lent. And somebody else wrote the devotional for today in the booklet out there. And that devotional talks about how this passage seems like a wonderful passage to look at as we begin our journey in Lent because it tells us that Jesus is going to be there for us, that Jesus is the, is the, the way that we come in, and that Jesus is going to lead us and, and tell us everything that we should do and give us the right path to follow and lead us to, right, if we link it to the, to the 23rd Psalm, He's going to lead us to, to good waters. He's going to give us plenty of food. He's going to anoint our head and take care of all of the problems that we could ever have, and He's going to do everything for us, and that's why this is a good reading to start the beginning of Lent. And they say, yes, it is, but did you read the last lines? Because in here, Jesus says that the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And then he says, in verse 17, For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. He knows that when he lays his life down, which means he dies, that it is going to be risen back up again. And no one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. You see, none of us could make Jesus do what he did. If he wanted to, 46 days from now, not go to the cross. He could have made that happen. But he didn't. And why? Because he wants the ministers of the Lord to weep when a world lives in darkness and that we hear about on a daily basis little children getting shot. He wants us to do something in a world that has asked you to journey with Him. He has asked you to learn who He is and to grow closer to Him. And do whatever it takes for you to do that. Knowing that He's always going to walk with you. And that He's always going to be calling you to come closer and follow more closely. And that He's always going to give you the nudge and the, the handout to help you along the way. Because that's what our Good Shepherd does. He chooses to freely give up His life so that He can give you one beyond all imagination. So on this night, as we remember our mortality, 
As we remember the fact that God created us out of dirt and at some point our bodies are going to go back to that same dirt. Even if we dress up nice and neat and try to look like Jesus, we can't because we're dirty. But Jesus still loves us and he still calls us to follow him. And he is still calling today. The hymn of the day in your bulletin says it's number 606, I think. Turn a few more pages back and go to 608. 